Okay, thank you very much indeed. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, everybody, and what a pleasure to be with my indie family. And no, this is real family. Um, this is a great motion, and the remit back is for one reason and one reason only. It's not complete. It's not complete because it doesn't include a movement that has got going very quickly um, and is getting off the ground faster than we can keep up with it, which has to do with putting the power back in the hands of Scotland's people. It has to do with excavating Scotland's written constitution. Right. We have... There is a phrase, the unwritten constitution of the UK, and actually that is inaccurate, and many legal scholars will say it's inaccurate. We have a written constitution. It's just that it's written in all kinds of different documents. So what we've got is an uncodified document. But if you go and look up UK unwritten constitution, here's what you're going to find. You, you might find yourself up on the page of the British Library, which has a wonderful article about where the constitution exists, and it'll take you through Magna Carta, the Declaration of Parliament, the Bill of Rights, and then on to the present, without a single mention of Scotland having any constitutional documents. So what happened? How did the pre-Union English constitution suddenly become the post-Union Scottish constitution? How did we all become English and bound by conventions, which, by the way, people will say in terms of Scottish excavation of the constitution, my goodness, that's ancient history, isn't it? I mean, why are you bothering with that? Let's deal with today's realities. Today's realities include something called parliamentary sovereignty, which says that parliament is sovereign over the people and a million people on the streets don't have as much influence as a corporate lobbyist. It's up to parliament. That's parliamentary sovereignty. High court ruled in 2016 that there was no requirement for parliament for the judges to listen to the electorate. Do you know Scotland had a very different system? And our ancestors, when they signed that forced marriage contract, and it was a contract, they put in a prenup. They did. They put in a get out clause. The get out was, and this was done, whatever you think of the Presbyterian Kirk, and I have Presbyterian ancestors going all the way back, they were worried that Scotland would lose her character, her judicial character, her religious character, and her constitutional character. So they made it a condition of the union and the treaty that that constitution was upheld. Now we've been excavating that constitution and very, in very short terms, what it says is, it is a crime in Scotland to claim that a parliament is sovereign over the people. It is a crime punishable by forfeiture of power. It is a crime to attack human rights. It is a crime to attack the right to process, to protest in Scotland. It is a crime to give money to your pals. It is a, without parliamentary oversight. It is a crime to use the law to go after your political enemies. So some of us, you may know about uh, the SSRG and Albafest and, and Salvo, some of us are excavating those rights because when you get married, if you have a prenup and the other partner breaks the conditions of that contract, you've got a way out. And it's not a coincidence that we've been being told that our way out is get a majority of MPs in Westminster. Oh, no, it's not. Prove that most people, including those who are only passing through, want it. Oh, no, it's not. Because the map that, that the prison governors will give us to get out, the map that the abuser in the marriage will give you to get out is gaslighting. We have, we have a way out. And that way out is to get the people of Scotland together, back up off their knees after the treachery and the betrayal and the centuries of abuse we have, we have suffered, and explain you are sovereign in Scotland. You lend your power to any government and you can take it back, not by saying, oh, well, we'll, we'll vote in another party. You can sack them and you can replace them. <laughs> so
So we are asking conference to send this wonderful motion back, and I wish we weren't, to include the acknowledgement that power in Scotland is vested in the people and that we need to support the movement that is looking to create that grassroots tidal wave that says to the whole of Scotland and the whole of the world and the international courts, this is our law, this is the crime that's been committed against us, and we will, thank you very much, be reconvening the Assembly of the People that was known as the Convention of the Estates, putting this government on trial, and when they are found guilty, sacking them. So, please. I feel the same way about my country, and I feel the same way about you guys. So I'm asking conference to remit back this wonderful motion and have it include support for the movement to reclaim Scotland's written constitution. Thank you very much.